What's up, folks? This is CJ Jackson coming from Official CJ Jackson. And I just wanted to just encourage you today with a word that I believe is one that is essential for the time that we are living right now. We're going to be talking about the truth about pornography. The truth about pornography. Or we can say the truth about porn because that is typically now the phrase that is used when you talk about pornography, but there has been a de decrease, if you will, about it being shared amongst those that pertain to be people of God. It's as if this is not really an item that God fully addresses throughout the entire word of God. It is being looked over. It is being actually just completely washed over and treated as if it's not that big of a deal. But we have to understand what the word really means and what it entails. And I want to get into it to a very deep level. First off, the word pornography or the word porn is from the Greek word pornania. And pornania actually means someone who is sexually immoral, someone who is an adulteress, a fornicator, someone who has done things in a sexual capacity to where virtually it has become a habitual lifestyle. It has become something that you cannot turn off. It has become what I'm going to get into in a minute. It has become idolatry because you have to understand idolatry is anything that has the supremacy of your heart, of your soul, of your time, of your preoccupation. For those that have been close to me, you know that idol worship deals with the triple A's. Anything that has your attraction, anything that has your attention, anything that has your adoration, that is what idolatry is. Some people are trying to use the word as if it is something that virtually is dealing with love. And let me tell you, there is quite a difference. Love and lust, because lust is really idolatry. That's why the Bible says, do not lust. And the lust of the world and the lust of the eyes, the Bible says, is not of God in the in First John. We know this is a reality, First John 2 and verse 15. So if we know that these things are a reality, why are we tippy-toeing around sharing what ultimately has become a major vice in people that are trying to live for God? Why are we evading, avoiding, walking around on eggshells and treating something that is destroying marriages, destroying men, destroying young men, teenagers, and people in general, not just men, but even women, it is destroying them from the inside out. And here is what we have to understand about idolatry. Idolatry is a form of worship. So when you are in the confine of dealing with pornography, watching information on a constant, regular process of visually and mentally and 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 and, and, and psychologically being being manipulated and being put into a a a a, a tailspin of events that keeps going around like a vicious cycle, you will begin to be like the children of Israel who walked around in the wilderness for 40 years. All it was, was a rerun. And many people who were caught up in pornography and porn or anything of that capacity, it's a rerun. Some of them who are in Christ and are trying to fight it, they find themselves being able to deal with it for a week or two, three weeks, but then again, here it comes with a vicious attack and you find yourself right back where you was before. And part of the main reason is because it is not just something that you do. It is a demonic operation. It is a God that virtually is of the demonic world. And it is trying to capture you and have you. And once you open that door, the only way you can get out of it, ladies and gentlemen, is from deliverance. 
And when I mean deliverance, I mean complete deliverance. You know when you have been completely delivered from something because it doesn't come back. When you are not completely delivered, then you are going to see the reoccurrence of something coming back. That door was never closed. That's why the Bible says, do not give the double a foothold. When you have a foothold that is open for access in the area of pornography, in the area of fornication, then you basically have your foot in the door, making sure you always have access. You may not think it, but it is an operating factor in your life. You have doubt that you can conquer this in Christ because what's at work is not God. What's at work is you. You don't have the faith because your faith is based upon something that has now saturated your heart and made it a condition of lifestyle. Listen, a condition of lifestyle. There is a huge difference between love and lust. Love is always going out to give and lust is always going out to get. Listen, you will know when you really are in love with God woo, because you were always going out to give. When it looks like you were always going out to get, you were always wanting to receive, wanting some stimulation, wanting something to arouse you, wanting something to excite you, wanting something to cause you to have a certain kind of move and operation or feeling. It's something that you're getting and something that you're not giving. Ladies and gentlemen, you are dealing in the realm of lust. Now let's look at some Bible because I believe it's very important that we deal with some things that are relative to what I'm talking about. So let's first go to the book of Galatians. Let's go to Galatians and let's deal with something that I think is paramount that we're speaking about right now. And so if you're in Galatians and I am in Galatians, we're in the book of Galatians chapter five. And the Bible says, now the works of the flesh are evident. So we got to understand that when the word evident is being highlighted in scripture, it's talking about this is something that is obviously seen, but it is seen by God. A lot of people are letting things that are happening in their life being ultimately only seen in private and not in public. But you have to understand what's done in private is always public when it comes to God. God sees everything. The Bible says whatever is done in the dark will be exposed in the light. So you need to understand you cannot get away with anything that ultimately is in the way of the will of God. So the Bible says this, now the works of the flesh are evident, which are idolatry, fornication, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery. You know, all of that stuff is in the same realm. It's all connected. It's all part of the same vein, if you will, all of it. When we talk about fornication and uncleanliness and lewdness, we're talking about people who don't have any restraint, people who are willing to go beyond the boundary, step out and do some things that they might regret, but now that they've done it, oh, well, it feels good. When we talk about idolatry, we're talking about the worshiping of things or the worshiping of self. You have heard me say, and I'm going to say it right now, that the biggest God of worship, of idolatry worship that we struggle with is me, myself, and I. That is the biggest one that we deal with and struggle with. And when you conclude that it is your plan to go ahead and facilitate what is going to be the best to make you feel good and get through what you're going through, ultimately you have chosen that and not God. See, God's will is that we crucify, deny, and lay some things at the cross, amen. And that deals with 
idolatry, that deals with the flesh, that deals with lust, that deals with pornography, that deals with all of that. But we got much more to get into. Amen. We've only just touched the subject of really the surface of talking about the truth about pornography. So we're going to have a part two on this. Amen. Because it is one of those areas you're not just going to go through it on the surface. You need to have some deep coverage and some deep understanding. So let me at least finish this passage to go a little bit further in what I want to talk about. After it discusses all the things that are the, 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 the works of the flesh, it says this. It says, and I tell you beforehand in verse 21, just as I also told you in times past, that those who practice such things, we're talking about the flesh, is a form of practice. Listen to me. The flesh is a regiment. The only way that it can become something that's consistent in your life because it has become habitual in your life. And you have to be aware of habits, habit forming ways that we incorporate in our life could be something that is actually in the same vein of idolatry. Be careful. Be careful of habits and that are going to lead you towards something that is always about getting and never giving. It's a big difference. Be careful about that. And so it says that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So let's stop there for a minute. We're going to pause for the cause because people have got to understand what does that mean? Does that mean that if if I am in the midst of struggling with, with masturbation or struggling with looking at pornography, that I'm not going to be a recipient of heaven? No, it didn't say that. It says that you will not inherit the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> the kingdom of God is that which is all the riches of his glory that is accessible, that you can tap into, that you can have access to right now. So you have to understand, as the Bible clearly doesn't do a thing without revealing a thing, a man will always reap what he sow. So if you are sowing seeds by way of fornication, masturbation, or pornography, you're going to have to deal with that which you're going to have to reap from. And ladies and gentlemen, let me go ahead and just end on this note before we go into part two. You're going to have to deal with sometimes the long-term effects of it. It's not going to be something that is instantaneously going to be removed from your life. You want to know why? Because it didn't instantaneously become a part of your life. It has gotten woven into you. It is what we would call, even in some confines of people, a soul tie. It is that to some degree in your life when you get involved into those kinds of things. It has become a knot that doesn't want to be unloosed, not without something that is going to be ferocious from God. So we're going to end on that note, and I pray that you will be with us on the next occasion as we cover part two. But never forget, never forget that you were born to be a blessing, not just so you can be blessed, so that others can be blessed by your blessing. Amen. May God bless you, and we see you on the next occasion.